My name is Luke Burkholder. I'm a nth year computer science student graduating this semester, and I currently work at the Faculty of Graduate Studies and Research at the University of Virginia. My name is Jeff Cliff, otherwise known around here is 2002-32298. Uh, I'm a computer science student here at the University of Regina, kind of finishing up my degree this semester. Uh, my name is Alec Oros. I'm a uh, professor or assistant professor of educational technology media at the Faculty of Education, University of Regina. My name is Mark Spooner. I'm a professor here in the Faculty of Education. I'm in educational psychology, although I do most of my research in social justice areas. In general, sort of a loss of control over what information is out there about you. Not just privacy, but reputation and branding. And you aren't just who you say you are. You're also who Bob says about you and who Je Jennifer says about you and so on. Uh, although uh, they do enable sharing of information and they do enable uh, more collaboration, uh, they're also, for the most part, owned. And a lot of these tools do allow uh, so you can require you to uh, submit your information by a, a freely distributable license. Um, but at the same time, uh, th say Flickr or something, if, if that were to go down, uh, then and if the university was relying on that service, uh, we could be sort of like the, in the dark. One is I'm putting myself up to scrutiny. My students too, like uh, many professors don't want to be scrutinized. Maybe, you know, and, and I never know who's watching in the end. Uh, these are public sites. Uh, they're not well publicized, but they're still public if you stumbled across it or you, a classmate you know, shared the, the URL. People can find it and so it makes, and it's uh, permanent. There's an, a level of permanence. So it takes a while to get over the gaze of the camera, uh, but students do and I do. We quickly forget that there's a microphone you know, every several feet. So that's one. You're up to scrutiny in a way that normally wouldn't be there. Um, there's a certain permanence to your words, to, to your thoughts, what you've said. That's maybe scary. Maybe it's unethical in some ways. Like there's always this question of ethics. What's ethical for the student who's learning, say, difficult material? Um, maybe they don't want to, to have that permanence because they're working through the, the knowledge of, say, we're talking about racism and they say something um, without having really thought about it. And well, now that thing's sort of published. There's, there's an element of publication, right? You, you're making it public. Um, so, so I think that's a risk. You can see examples of people who have maybe 500 Facebook friends or a thousand Facebook, maybe not a thousand, but certainly. Uh, numbers approaching that uh, in terms of online friends and you know you go to live journal the same thing the myspace the same thing just lots and lots of friends but you don't really interact with them in any meaningful fashion uh, on the other hand tools like facebook tools um, like live journal they, they allow you to take some of the sort of drudgery of maintaining social relationships uh, and to automate them away allowing you to uh, spend more time doing the things that are, I guess, at a higher level of uh, meaning or a higher, more meaningful in a sense. Uh, and this allows you to, if you use them correctly, uh, maintain more friendships, uh, better friendships, uh, and sort of allow you to be more trustworthy, a uh, better friend, etc. Uh, obviously, this isn't universally how these tools are used, um, but it's there. If you look at just our context of Saskatchewan, one million people, um, and you know, if you look at the number of teachers, it's quite limited in terms of how you would say this. You know, Texas is I don't know how many times bigger than us. For instance, one state could be how many times the size of, of uh, you know, Regina or or Saskatchewan as a population. So to have uh, access to many more passionate. Uh, best practice type educators is, is pretty cool and social networks allow that to happen. I use a WordPress site and I find that it, it really opens up a lot of avenues for my students and, and for my own learning. So um, some of the tools, so WordPress would be one of the big ones I guess and I use Skype or other uh, 
other ways of bringing people in from remote locations. So how I use it. Um, so I have a WordPress site and what I do is I actually film my classes. I, I record my graduate class and I produce these what I call learning enhanced re-presentations of the class. So they're about 10 minute clips of particularly interesting conversations we've had. So if we've had a good debate or an exchange about an idea, the students get to revisit that. And I found that very useful in so many ways. One, maybe you didn't feel like talking that day. You had a headache or you didn't feel well or you didn't eat lunch or for whatever reason, you just didn't feel like talking. Um, it gives you an opportunity to re-enter that conversation. The other thing is even if you spoke, uh, sometimes don't, people don't remember the classroom as it happened. And so they get an opportunity to review what they've, what they've said. And uh, maybe you just didn't do the readings and you get an opportunity to read up on the topics that we talked about to be able to form an opinion and then re-enter that conversation. So how I use it personally, um, I'm using things like Twitter and Facebook. Uh, Twitter more likely, tw uh, Facebook I tend to use more for personal stuff. Twitter I used for, I think a good way of putting it is Facebook is for people I already know, Twitter is for people I don't even know I want to know yet. And that's, that's sort of the whole uh, thrust around it. So I connect with educators that, that are doing really cool things in their classroom. And I'm able to connect with them, find out what they're doing, and then show my students uh, what they're doing. Uh, those teachers can be inspiring to them. They can be, uh, you know, they can be mentors to my students. In doing that and researching those questions, I'm using the same context, using a personal learning network, uh, developing a personal learning network through uh, mostly Twitter, uh, educational blogs, through synchronous tools like Illuminate, um, Skype, those sorts of things to, uh, to build social capital, to, um, to gain friendships of trust, uh, peer relationships, colleagues that way and to ask questions like that. For me to have um, colleagues out there, whether it's Michigan or whether it's Barcelona, um, I can do that now. I can talk to people all the time. So what I do end up, what I end up doing is basically developing the idea of an invisible college, whereas my Skype is my interface to my hallway. So I can talk to people down the road if I'm, if I'm wondering what texts I should be researching or what authors I, that I need to be looking at, uh, who's done you know, some you know, publications on this, and who's done some research on this area. I can basically go into my Skype or I can go into Twitter and ask some of those questions and they get answered like instantly. And it's just amazing. I found it's, it's been a wonderful eye-opener for people and a new avenue for me to disseminate what I'm finding. So to put theory into practice um, through video and other forms, having the people speak for themselves and presenting data in a new way um, has really pushed the knowledge translation and uh, dissemination avenue forward. So, and the uptake's been amazing. Um, and I think Web 2.0 can be used as a method to get back to neutral research teaching and with as little bureaucracy as necessary. Some is necessary, but the amount that goes on in most universities is a little bit too much. Uh, in terms of universities, if they don't understand that people can form their own personal learning networks and get the same knowledge outside of the university, um, they better wake up because uh, resting on our laurels of credentialization will only last for so long, I think, um, and people will seek knowledge elsewhere. You probably already do it yourselves. You want to know about something, you Google it, and you watch a video, and um, universities can't, they're not the gatekeepers anymore. Um, so we used to have the libraries, the actual physical holdings of knowledge, and we would decide who can enter, who can look at them, and who can interpret them. Well, I see the role of universities in the future as teaching people how to look at that knowledge, how to be a better learner. That, that's what I'd like my students. I don't want to be the one who contains the knowledge. I want to teach you, if I can, maybe. These are some processes to help you be a better learner, to be a more critical uh, reader of whatever you're looking for. And I see that as more our future.